Good morning or good evening, everyone.、Uh, welcome to this class. This class will provide a high-level review for the geoscience earthquake engineering. That will help you to use the ASC 716 Chapter 21 for the site response analysis. So this slide is the provide how、uh, earthquake is generated. So basically,、uh, need、uh, three parts. The first earthquake source, then you have the wave propagation, and finally, it's site response near. The shallow ground surface. The source is where the earthquake start as a full rupture. Then the seismic waves propagate through the solid rock, similar like the sound wave propagation. Then near the ground surface, because the soil is a very a different material,、uh, it has quite no linearity during the wave propagation. Uh, most time, it will amplify the seismic wave due to a、uh, much lower stiffness、uh, or the wave velocity.、Uh, this slide demonstrates the tectonic plates of Earth.、Uh, large earthquakes typically occur at the boundary of different tectonic plates,、uh, generally about seventy. Large earthquake is around the Pacific Ocean.、Uh, we typically call this as a fire of rain for earthquakes.、Uh, there are four major different type of fault:、uh, strike, slip fault, a normal fault, reverse fault, and、uh, we call this oblique fault. So the strike slip fault the Two、uh, play, two ground play. They move in the horizontal direction, and the normal four they move in the vertical direction.、Um, the high end wall will go down. The foot wall at the base will stay there.、Uh, you may need to understand the foot wall or high end wall because those terms will be used to for the. Uh, seismic hazard analysis.、Uh, if you need to do the ground motion analysis, the reverse fault just the、uh, kind of opposite to the normal fault, where the high end wall actually move upward. So you can see that it typically need more energy to leave the high end wall、uh, to make it go up. So usually the reverse Fault have a, a bigger earthquake than a normal fault. So oblique fault just can combine the、uh, both horizontal and the vertical、uh, play movement. So it can go horizontal a little bit and go down a little bit. So you need to understand、uh, the different faults that will help you to select the ground motions later for the site response analysis. So this slide just、uh, give you、uh, the definition of the earthquake epicenter.、Uh, the high percenter is where the earthquake rupture starts. Then the epicenter is a point directly above it at the surface of the earthquake. So then, if you have a project interest here, so that will be the epicenter distance. So this distance is also important. It's a very important、um, factor for you select the earthquake events and the, then the input motions. There are two major approaches for measuring earthquakes. One is based on the intensity. This one is developed prior to the invention of modern scientific instruments. So at that time, they cannot direct measure the how big measure the energy of earthquake. So the earthquake were 
quantitatively measured by their effect. So basically by how much damage at the ground surface. So based on the the damage condition, they divide the the damage effect as uh, the 12 different tiers. And uh, they call that as a modified McCartney intensity. I uh, know some countries like China, they still perform the seismic design based on intensity. Magnitude is uh, kind of more, more than way to quantify the earthquake by the energy released. So there are some kind of uh, device that can measure how much the full rupture movement and uh, the energy associated with that movement. And uh, typically right now, we there, there are several different magnitude to define the earthquake, but now we typically use a moment magnitude is defined as this equation. The M0, that's the total energy of earthquake. And uh, the MW, that's the moment magnitude. So based on this equation, what I want to highlight is um, um, an earthquake of magnitude 7 uh, the energy renew, released from this earthquake is about 32 times as much energy as one of magnitude 6 earthquake. So there, you, there is a one magnitude increase. The energy is 32 times increase. So keep that in mind. Seismic wave propagations, there are four different types of seismic wave uh, propagation. Uh, two of them are body wave uh, propagation. They are P wave and S wave. P waves, uh, its primary wave are compressional and uh, dilatational waves. So it induces volumetric deformation and the direction of the wave propagation is parallel to the particle movement. So you can say, you know, this is a direction of a wave propagation and also the, the particle movement is parallel to the wave propagation. The S wave, a secondary wave, is caused by the shear deformation, and no volumetric deformation. Um, it, the particle movement, you know, is uh, kind of perpendicular to the wave uh, propagation direction. So this is the particle movement, and this is the wave propagation. So you can see that the, you know, the wave propagation in this direction, but particle movement is up and down. It's perpendicular to the to the wave propagation. Knob wave is a wave only occur near the ground surface. Uh, this wave is not very important. Uh, similar like the S wave, the particle movement is perpendicular to the direction. So you see that the bottom stay the same. You only have the, the surface movement. And the rainy waves is a uh, uh, the speed is a slightly slower than S wave, so the particle movement is in both vertical and horizontal direction uh, that follow this kind of uh, elliptic pattern. Uh, this surface wave is uh, quite important because um, right now people can direct measure the surface wave, the rainy wave. Then through some equation, uh, there are some kind of correlation between the S wave and the uh, rainy wave. So once you measure the rainy wave, you can uh, indirectly calculate the S wave. Wave repass at interfaces. Uh, so when the wave ray hit uh, the boundary of two dif 
different material, uh, there will be refraction and uh, the angle, the refracted wave, uh, the angle will be follow this slale no equation. So if you have incident wave has a, a entry angle I1, you can use this uh, equation to calculate the I2 for the refracted wave. So typically the material at a deeper location has a, a higher shear wave velocity. Uh, so th basically the V2 is greater than V1. So based on this equation, so the I2 is uh, typically less than I1. At the same time, you will see the reflection. So the wave, like a mirror wave will reflect. Since it's in the same material, it still follow the snail's law. Since it's in the same material, the, so these two angles, they are same. So this slide just uh, show how the vertical uh, repass near the ground surface. Uh, assume this earthquake source uh, it will the wave propagation from very deep location to ground surface. As what I said, the, at the deeper location, it, the soil stiffness or rock stiffness uh, are typically higher. So you will see uh, the refracted wave angle becomes smaller and smaller. Eventually, it will uh, approach or equal to zero. So that means the wave will propagate in this uh, vertical direction. Um, so for that near the ground surface, uh, we can get a you know one dimensional assumption. You know all the way will propagate in a vertical direction. And uh, for the energy wise, uh, most of energy of seismic wave near ground surface is the S wave. So the S wave is the particle direction is uh, perpendicular to the wave propagation direction. So, so the soil will move in this direction. So that will be the focused area for side response analysis. So this is a a theoretic model for the 1D side response analysis. For this, uh, there are some assumptions. First, we assume the soil layer uh, as one dimensional. Uh, each layer can extend to infinity. And also, we uh, ignore the in, you know, interaction between the soil layers. So, so that each soil layer can move uh, freely, uh, independent to another layer. So then, as what I said, you know, 90% seismic wave are the S waves. So in a 1D side response analysis, we uh, only look at the, the shear response of soil. So we only have the shear modulus, the G1 to Gn. At the same time, you need the, the soil uh, density. So from that, uh, you know, that's the soil profile and the property properties. And also you need the sinkiness of each layer. After that, you need to determine, you know, soil is high, highly nonlinear material. What kind of soil model you want to use? Uh, that will determine the stiffness at different uh, shear strain and also for dynamic analysis you need to determine the damping. So the damping is also depends on the soil strain, it's a highly nonlinear. Uh, finally, you know, certainly you need the input motion for the side response analysis at rock base. So input motion at rock base and you get the uh, motion at ground surface. So that's uh, how the side response analysis work. So in the following class, I will talk about how to determine the input motion, how to determine the soil profile and the property based on the ASC 7, um, chapter 21. 
and also what kind of program or can kind of soil model you can use for the site response analysis. So this is all for today's class. Feel free to let me know any comments and questions. Thank you very much.